on a young leading actor that will be part of a rather intriguing three-hour drama here today. Peyton Manning and his NFL debut. Welcome, everybody. Ian Eagle along with Mark May. Great to be with you for the return of the NFL on CBS. And Mark, every professional athlete's career starts somewhere. For Peyton Manning, this is the day. And the Colts are obviously hoping that this is just the beginning of something very special. Absolutely, Ian. And Peyton Manning was a quarterback that was bred to be a quarterback and born just for this moment. Throughout the course of the history of the NFL, many quarterbacks have played in their rookie season, but there's never been a quarterback like Peyton Manning that's been prepared mentally and physically as he is at this moment. And at the last minute, he turned to someone for some late advice. That was another quarterback, and that was his father, Archie Manning, telling him to son, just have fun. Chris Gardaki has kicked it off. We are underway in the end zone. A touchback. The Miami Dolphins winning the toss. I want to welcome those of you joining us who are watching the Tennessee-Cincinnati matchup. Dan Marino taking the field for his 16th NFL season, all of them with the Miami Dolphins. That is a new franchise record. Marino still feels like he has some good football left in him. How fitting that he would be on the same field as Manning would make his pro debut. A first and ten from the 20. Double tight end set for the Dolphins to open up. Marino on a handoff. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is engulfed for a two-yard loss. Al Fontano got to it. Take a look at the starting lineups for the Dolphins offensively. That right side, Kevin Donnelly. Good free agent pickup from Tennessee. Also, backs and receivers, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar returns for his third year. 15 touchdowns on the ground last season to lead the NFL. Stick with that two tight end set. Loss of a yard and a half on first down. Marino will put it in the air for the first time. Dumps it off, it's cut by Perry. And quickly, Robert Blackman was there to greet him. For the Indianapolis Colts, defensively, Dan Footman making a name for himself in the NFL. Ten sacks in the final ten games of Carolina. Third and ten, and it is loud early. Marina will work out of the shotgun. Just underway from the RCA Dome. Marino fires. Half a man open. Broad and gorgeous grab by Lamar Thomas for the first down. A 15-yard pickup. Excellent protection by the offensive line. Good relationship. Good separation. Here's the replay. Look at the separation between line and quarterback. Giving Danny Marino the opportunity to see down the field. Step and throw. That's all he wants to do. Get that shotgun snap. Turn and look and fire that ball and get it out of there. Thomas goes to the sidelines. Couple of minutes elapsed here in the first. Two receivers now for the Dolphins. Marino has some time. Over the middle, he makes the connection. Stanley Pritchett, the fullback, across the 40-yard line. Jeff Harrod made the stop, a seven-yard gain. And I, and I think Jimmy Johnson's pulled one on the Indianapolis Colts. The entire preseason, we're going to run and pound the ball. They've only run it once thus far. They're going back to Dan Marino and throwing the football. During training camp, all they have talked about is balance. They have a new offensive coordinator, Kippy Brown. They bang that point home. Run, run, run. So far, the pass has been effective. Marino on a second and three. Handoff. Squirting up the middle. And the gain for Abdul Jabbar. Kevin Donnelly laying out the block. And a strong run on second down of six. It's a first down for Miami. The Miami Dolphins, they come. Right here with the counter tray, you're going to see the right guard, right tackle, pull to their left, block out by the right guard, Kevin Donnelly, and turn it by the right tackle, James Brown, right there, boom. Cream Abdul-Jabbar gets a great scene, follows his blockers, heads up, first down Miami Dolphins. Miami moving the football, just shy of the 50. Stanley Pritchard sets up in the slot, he's in motion, the fullback. Marino, play action. Marino will dump it off the safety valve, it's Pritchard. Crosses midfield, and a modest gain on first down as Steve Morrison came down around the legs to grab him. Pickup of three for Pritchett. The Miami Dolphins offense 
They've got the big guys in there, both tight ends. They're condensing the defense, and it looks like it's going to be a run, but they're throwing the football. They have great pass protection on that last play. You were able to see the left tackle, which one red, pull behind the tight ends and block. Great athletic ability. Marino, he's been perfect so far. Four of four. 26 yards. Pritchett in motion. Marino on a give. Abdul Jabbar. Big hole for Abdul Jabbar as he drives his way for a first down. James Brown laying out the block. Good for another Miami first down. Abdul Jabbar, there's the balance, and Abdul Jabbar will play a major role in that. And watch the right side. They're just going to mash people. Kevin Donnelly gets the linebacker. Jeff Ferrard hits him in the mouth and stays with him, drives him back farther, past the play right there, throws him over the running back, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. That's why in the offseason they signed him as a free agent. He was their top priority. He's the guy that Jimmy Johnson went after, and that's the guy they signed as Kevin Donnelly. Three carries, 13 yards for Abdul Jabbar, the eighth play of the drive, and a first down for Miami in Colts territory. The pitch out, Abdul Jabbar bouncing to the outside. He's upended, just shy of a 35-yard line by Jeff Burris. But again, another strong running play on first down. They pick up four. This is a team that averaged just over three yards per carry last year, the worst of the NFL. And I, and this is exactly what Jimmy Johnson wanted to do. He wanted to play smash, smash mouth football, take the pressure off of Danny Marino, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, and don't turn it over. He wants that ball in the hands of the offense as much as possible. So far, it's been all offense with 9.28 to play in the first. First drive of the game. Marino on a second and six. Steps up in the pocket, over the middle, has his man across the 35-yard line. Bernie Parmalee, the veteran in his seventh year out of Ball State. Steve Morrison and Jeff Harrod collaborated on the stop. It'll be third and short coming up. Daniel Constantine Marino, 16th year in the NFL. And I and everyone's talked about the Miami Dolphins don't have receivers, but they've got guys that can come out of the backfield. Troy Drayton, the tight end, can catch the ball. They're going to mix and match and get the ball into different receivers. They do have receivers, but not a great deep throw. The sold-out crowd trying to cheer on the defense. A third and one, double tight end. Marino to Abdul Jabbar moving ahead to the 30-yard line. He had to get to the 31. They'll move the chains in Miami in business. A first and 10 for the Dolphins. Look at the left side of the line. These guys right here, tight end, right guard, left guard, left tackle. Watch the push they're going to get. They're going to create a scene so Jabbar can cut it back. Look at the push at the end of the play. They're staying on their blockers. Even though the running back has gone by them, these guys are trained to keep pushing, shoving, fighting. It's a mentality with this team. Kippy Brown, the offensive coordinator, says, hey, we want these guys to know that they're going to run the ball, and we have confidence in them doing it. Another one of Brown's weapons takes the field for the first time. Rookie John Avery out of Mississippi, the first-round draft pick. Play action. Marino. Drayton had it. It's incomplete. That would have been a beautiful catch as he had his helmet knocked off in the process. Steve Morrison, jarring hit. And I am, here's the replay. Watch Danny Marino roll out of the pocket. It's a design play for Danny Marino. This is incredible. Danny Marino throughout his entire career has never broken the pocket. Now that he's older, his 16th year, he's lost a lot of weight in the offseason, cut down the body fat. They're utilizing Danny Marino like he was a 25-year-old. That was Elijah Alexander sticking it to Troy Drayton. Avery by himself in the backfield. Marino on a second and ten. Give to Avery. Lots of running room for Avery, just shy of the 10-yard line, and that's the element he brings to this Miami offense, that fifth year. The big play dimension, John Avery, that's why they drafted him. A 4-3-7-40, second fastest at the combine. Watch the offensive line. These guys right here, he's going to take that ball and zap it down the field. Look at the push. Watch the center, Tim Riley. Ruddy right there. Gets a hand on the backer. He's going to get trapped. And look at Avery. Nothing but clear daylight in front of him. And that's that speed, that second dimension. Once he turns it on past the linebackers, he can pick up a lot of real estate. 17-yard gain for the rookie. And a first and ten at the Colts' 12-yard line. Miami moving the ball with ease. And off. Avery cutting it back through the middle. Across the ten. Down at the eight-yard line. Jason Belzer making the stop. John Avery 
a Warwick Dunn type of running back, undersized, but he's lightning quick. Absolutely, and I, it's just like Warren Dunn with Avery, everyone thought he would be a third down back. Jimmy Johnson says no. He worked out hard in the offseason. They found out that Warwick Dunn could be an every down back. John Avery is an every down back. Avery goes to the sideline. Abdul Jabbar spells it. Four yard game. 13th play of the drive. Marino pumps it, looking for the end zone. Drinky was there, but he couldn't haul it in. Steve Morrison on the coverage. Good protection by the Dolphins. They substitute for Avery, take him out, put Kareem Abdul-Jabbar back in the game. They felt the blitz. Watch the replay. Watch Jabbar right here. He's got to pick up the block. Right there, the blitzing backer, boom, give Danny Marino a little bit more time to release that ball, even though it's incomplete. Everyone on this team has to participate in the blocking scheme, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar will lay the coals to anyone. A third and six. Miami just chewing up clock here in the first quarter. Marino, a quick throw. McDuffie trying to find some running room. Just shy of a five-yard line, short of a first down. Blackman and Help combining on the tackle. And a field goal situation for the Dolphins. And I am that's one of the very few times that you will see O.J. McDuffie not come up with a first down. Throughout his career on third down, he has 87 third down receptions for first downs out of 98 attempts. Short field goal for Olendo Mare. Had a terrific rookie season last year. Out of Syracuse, a 22-yard attempt. Mare bangs it through, and the Dolphins get on the board first. 6.22 to play in the first at the RCA Dome. Dolphins lead it 3-0. Peyton Manning, when we come back. Top draft pick Peyton Manning waits on the sideline for his opportunity to get a crack at this Miami defense. Dolphins putting three points on the board with 541 left in the opening quarter a jimmy johnson type of drive absolutely that's exactly what he wanted he likes smash mouth football short throws long runs if you can get them but he wanted to control the line of scrimmage and on that drive the dolphins offensive line good mari kicks it off bailey and scott are deep and so is mari's kick colts forced to take the touchback Peyton Manning's NFL debut when we return to the RCA Dome in a moment. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. IBM, are you ready for e-business? And by Mitsubishi Motors, the all-new 1999 Galant. Wake up and drive. Twenty-two-year-old Peyton Manning, the cornerstone of this Colts franchise, as prepared for this moment as any QB coming out of college. First and ten for the Colts at the 20. Manning will put it in the air for the first time. Colts makes the catch. He's got room and shoved out of bounds. At the 35-yard line by Sean Wooden, Manning's first pass, a connection to Falk, the combination that Colts fans hope to see a lot of down the line. Plus, it's the New Orleans combination, both of these guys from New Orleans. It's just a little swing pass. Get his confidence up. Drop it off to a great running back that had 47 receptions last year, Marshall Falk. Catches it, turns it up down the sidelines for the first down. That might also get the butterflies out of the system. Make that first completion right off the bat. 15-yard gain, first and 10, flags go down. The give is to Falk as he surges ahead across the 40-yard line, but early flags on that play. It'll work against Miami. Bob McElwee, our referee, the veteran here at the RCA Dome this afternoon. Peyton Manning wanted a reason. Offside, 92, defense, five yards, first step. Have to go back to 1971. Archie Manning made his first start as an NFL quarterback, the number two pick in the draft by the New Orleans Saints. On that day, he beat the Rams. The last quarterback, a rookie to start 
and finish a game and win in his first pro game. And off, it's going up the middle. Miami was there, a crowd of tacklers to surround Marshall Falk, led by Daryl Gardner. Just shy of the 45-yard line. And I'm what the Indianapolis Colts wanted to do is go two tight ends in there to relieve the pressure off of Peyton Manning and get a good push. Jim Morris said, hey, we're going to play a little smash mouth football to see if they can stop our running attack. Call it a second and one following the penalty in the four-yard run by Falk. Manning, it's Falk again. He's got the first down and he's shoved back behind the marker but forward progress will be enough. Zach Thomas was there. First down, Colts. Time ticking away here in the first quarter. Miami on a long drive to pick three points on the scoreboard. And that's got to build a lot of confidence in that young quarterback right there, Peyton Manning. Come out, complete your first pass, run the ball, get the first down. Now you're sustaining the drive. Great drive, great call by the offensive coordinator of the Colts, Tom Moore. Two receivers, double tight end. Pitch out, Falk waiting for an opening that will not emerge for it. He is shoved back by Sean Wood and a loss on the play of one. Great reaction by Wooden. He's going to come in and fill here. You can't go east and west. Watch Marshall Falk. He's going to hesitate and look for an alleyway. Well, the speed of the Miami defense will not allow that. A perfect head-to-head, one-on-one tackle by the safety, Sean Wooden. For Marshall Falk, three carries, five yards. And a second and 11 for Indy. Manning. Again, short pass. This is Falk to the outside. Marshall Falk. He's got a first down in Miami territory. Sam Madison had a shot at him, but Falk went right around him. And it was the move. Watch the move out here. He's going to put on Sam Madison. It's a little duck pass, wing pass to the left. Same play they had before earlier in the first play of the game. Dump it off the Falk. But what makes this play go, watch the move right there. Sam Madison's beaten. He's on the turf, and Falk just goes around him for the first down. We talk so much about Peyton Manning. Marshall Falk is still probably the most important part of this offense, though. He's been involved in every play so far. On a first and ten. Falk. He was greeted by Tim Bowens and Brock Marion and a loss of one. Not only the most important, they asked him to be a leader. Bill Foley and the president and general manager Jim Morris said, Morris said, I want him as a leader. He's been here. He's only 25 years old in his fifth year. He's and a he veteran. Looks, yeah, he's a veteran at 25 years old. He's the guy that's got to lead us. He can catch the ball in the backfield. He's our number one runner. He's been here for a while. He's our marquee player. You mentioned Mora. Let's not forget. New coach, new president, new quarterback, and renewed optimism here in Indianapolis. They were 3-13 and 13 last season. Falk. Marshall Falk doing some damage short of the first down as he got ahead to the 35. Sean Wooden, the tackle. It'll be third and three upcoming for the Colts. Watch, watch the cut here that Marshall Falk's going to make. Outstanding. He's got somebody in his view. Good job by the line of blocking. He's got to take this ball. Watch the cut right there. Look at the hold, the great vision. Cut the ball back, went right back the middle, went right by the middle linebacker, Zach Thomas. That's why they have Marshall Falk as the leader of this offense. He is the marquee player of the offense. Down to a minute 24 to play in the first. Third and three for the Colts. Manning looks downfield. He makes the connection at the 30-yard line, and he makes it to his favorite receiver in the preseason, Marvin Harrison. First down, Indy. Watch Harrison right here. He's going to beat the cornerback that's head-to-head -head with him, Terrell Buckley, and this is the matchup that Indianapolis wanted. They've got a connection. Marshall Falk is the marquee guy, but Marvin Harrison and Peyton Manning hooked up in the preseason. Four touchdown passes for Peyton Manning. They all went to that man right there. Marvin Harrison. Remember, we're looking at a rookie at QB. Doesn't come across as one. On a first and ten at the 30. Fakes it. Manning had his man, but overthrows the intended receiver, Zach Crockett. I, and I'm not crazy about that call. He's three for three, sitting in the pocket, dumping the ball off, getting first downs. Why try to get cute in this situation? He's already comfortable. Let's not bring out the entire bag of tricks this early. 
Well, we'll see yeah, if this affects him during the drive. Fake screen right there. They roll him out of the pocket. He's throwing on the run. He's a big guy. He's not that comfortable throwing on the run. Leave him in the pocket. Let him do what he does best. Three wideouts. Torrance Small checking into the game. Small setting up in the slot. Colts answering back with a long drive of their own. 38 seconds to play in the first. Inside handoff. A fumble. Crockett coughs it up. Picked up by Marriott. And the Colts turn it over. Deep in Miami territory, the Dolphins take advantage. Miami Dolphins, they practice and harp on this. Watch this, it's just a handoff. Zach Crockett, his first carry. Watch the arms come in there at the end of the tackle. Right there, he sit on the ball. And the Miami Dolphins recover this fumble. They harp on turnovers in Miami. They harp on turnovers right here in Indianapolis. Marion recovers it. Miami football when we return. 3-0 Dolphins. The first drive in the professional football career of Peyton Manning. It results in a turnover, but certainly Manning cannot be blamed for that. He looked poised. He looked prepared. But it was Zach Crockett coughing up the football. And he didn't look like a rookie. Dan Marino. <laughs> Dolphins lead it 3 nothing. Marino settles back in the pocket. Abdul Jabbar drops the football. Kareem Abdul Jabbar, who has gone over 2,000 yards combined in his first two years, still feels, though, that he deserves some respect around the NFL. They bring in John Avery, a change of pace back. Abdul Jabbar has had the numbers, just not the average per carry. And Jimmy Johnson says he's the most unappreciated running back in the NFL. But Jimmy Johnson appreciates him. He led the NFL with touchdowns last year with 16. Abdul Jabbar and Fritchett in the backfield. Marino on a second and ten. Both were coming. He unloaded and got it to Troy Drayton across the 30-yard line. Shy of a first down. Steve Morrison with the tackle. Troy Drayton, a big guy. Kippy Brown, the offensive coordinator for the Dolphins, says that he could be the best blocking tight end in the NFL, but everybody on this team wants to get him the ball because when he's downfield, those little guys Please can not the, the big game tight end. Clock to 11 seconds. 11 seconds. So they take four seconds off the game clock. Time trickling away here in the first. And that will be it. Two long drives but only three points on the scoreboard. That's the end of the first quarter. End of the quarter. first quarter. Miami leading Indianapolis. Three to nothing. We will return to the RCA Dome right after this message and a word from your local station. Miami leads Indianapolis. Start of the second quarter here at the RCA Dome. The Dolphins facing a third and one at the 33. Marino on the handoff. He's got the first down. And this drive will continue for the Dolphins. Talked about Peyton Manning and how much poise he showed in his first drive. Dan Marino, this is a man who defied the odds, stepped in as a rookie and was successful right off the bat. Manning certainly trying to emulate the kind of success Marino had at the beginning of his career, which has continued throughout now in his 16th season. First and 10 dollars at their own 39. Abdul Jabbar is a sweep, getting to the outside, and crosses the marker as they'll move the chains. Another first down. He was chased out by Roger, Robert Blackman. Troy Drayton, I talked about, he could be the best blocking tight end in the NFL. Right there, he's got to get the defensive end, get a good lock on him. Footman, just enough to get his hands and push. That allows running back Kareem Abdul Jabbar to get to the corner. Get around the corner, get the first down. All he has to do is get his hands in his chest and a push, and Drayton, they love him as a blocker. This guy's big, strong, Jimmy type of tight end that can block and catch. First and ten for the Dolphins. Abdul Jabbar making a statement early. Seven carries, 35 yards, but Marino will put it in the air. Deep down the field over the middle, and it's incomplete. Stanley Pritchett, the fullback, getting deep. 
Watch the fullback here. He's going to go down the field. Get wide open. But Danny Marino, such a quick release. He's going to fake it there. Look at him. The, the arm pump turns to his left. There he is out to the wide side. The fullback getting down the field. That's incredible. Great speed, great hands. He's known as a blocker, not a runner or receiver. But Marino saw him open and took his mm. shot in the middle of the field. And Pritchett had a shot at it. Could not hold on a second and ten. Tony McCoy checks in on the defensive line for Vermont Whittington. And a box play as Marino trips down. Third down upcoming. Now for an NFL Today report, let's go to Jim Nance in New York. Okay, Ian, Jerry Rice caught a 17-yard pass that helped set up the 49ers for the score. Out of the eye, they gave it to... Garrison Hurts, touchdown, and the Niners lead late in the first quarter over the Jets, 7-3. Let's go back to Indy. Thank you, Jim. 3-0 here. Dolphins leading the Colts. Miami facing a third and 11 at their own 48. Dime package for the Colts. Three receivers for the Dolphins. Out of the shotgun, Marina. Here comes Indy. Could not make the connection to the rookie, John Avery. And the Dolphins will be forced to punt for the first time this afternoon. Danny Reno spreads everybody out. Gets good protection from the offensive line, but Avery's got to come up with that pass. Although he's a rookie, he needs to come up with that ball. Here's the replay. Good separation, shotgun formation between line and quarterback. Danny's got a chance to step up. Here comes a late rusher. Danny flicks it out there, but you've got to catch that ball. They count on you to catch the ball even though you're a rookie. Come down with a catch. Get a lot of real estate for the first thing. Klaus Wilmsmeyer back in the league. After being out of the NFL for a year, Aaron Bailey allows it to bounce. Miami try to bat it back, and they do. Frank Wainwright knocking the ball backwards. Colts fans wanted a touchback. And I, and that's just great coaching by special teams coach Mike Westoff of the Miami Dolphins. Outstanding. And they will bring it out to the 20 for Peyton Manning when we come back. 3-0 Miami. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Coors Light. Frost brewed to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. And by American Express. Wherever you are, whatever you're Manning will throw the deep pass. At the 38-yard line, a 42-yard pickup, Manning to Harrison. And when you need a big play, you go to your guy right there, the guy that you're throwing to all three season, Marvin Harrison. He fights off the defender, defensive back Terrell Buckley, right down the middle of the field, right down to the post. The ball is dropped right where it has to be dropped by Peyton Manning. A perfect throw and a perfect reception by Marvin Harrison. Setting up a first and ten. At the Miami 38-yard line, the first long one of Manning's career. Quick handoff, Marshall Falk, stopped by Darrell Gardner. And that pass play has to give that young man a lot of confidence. He's hitting passes all over the field, but when he can drop back and hit the long ball, right there builds confidence. There's his dad, Archie Manning, right there, talking to his son, Eli, which is a great quarterback in high school, being recruited by everyone, saying, now, Eli, I know you can complete that pass. <laughs> He's a junior. Every school in the country would like to get his hands on. Second and 12. Jason Taylor has checked in for Miami. And up going around the tackle. Marshall Falk. Jerome Payton, the rookie, trying to lay out a block, but Zach Thomas sniffed it out. There's Taylor, talented second-year player out of Akron. Injured left knee against Green Bay in the preseason. There were some doubts whether or not he'd be able to suit up for this game. Did not start. Daniel Stubbs got the nod at right defensive end, but Taylor's in there now. On a third and six, dime package for Miami. Manning at pump fake, and it's incomplete. Marvin Harrison was there. Going back the other way, but this one's going to get called back. Dolphins felt that Harrison had hauled it in, and they might have a fumble on their hands, but no go. 
to Peyton Manning tried to force that ball into coverage. Watch the defenders converge right here on Marvin Harrison. He's got the ball. Look at all the Dolphin defenders right there. The ball goes on the ground, but he had good protection from his line. There was a blitzer on that play, Zach Thomas. That's why he got rid of that ball in a hurry. It was a good read by a young quarterback on his first blitz. 51-yard field goal attempt for the rookie Mike Vanderjack from the CFL. His first kick, and it's a doozy. Beat out Kerry Blanchard for the job. Vanderjack on the way. He's got it, and then some. Jack. We're tied at three. First point scored in the Jim Mora era. Veteran head coach, his first year in Indianapolis. Chris Gardaki will kick it off following the long field goal from Mike Vanderjet. John Avery is the deep man, along with Kirby Dardar. Brock Marion normally returns kickoffs for Miami, but he's on the sidelines. Gardaki, the putter. And over end. Avery, a couple yards deep. He's going to take it out. The rookie getting to the outside with a burst of speed. John Avery is down just shy of the 35-yard line. A 36-yard return. Dolphins and Colts all knotted at three apiece. Dolphins and Colts tied at three with 10.41 to play in the first half. Coming up on the NASDAQ Halftime Report, Jim Nance, Marcus Allen, Brent Jones, and George Seifert will have all the scores and highlights. That's coming up on the NASDAQ Halftime Report. John Avery with a 36-yard return. Setting it up at the 34-yard line. Another double tight end formation. We've seen a lot of that for the Miami Dolphins. In motion, Perry. Marino. On the give, Abdul Jabbar hurtling across the 35-yard line. Jeff Harrod and Ellis Johnson were there. Gain of three on first down. Injured player on the field for the Indianapolis Colts. Looks like Ellis Johnson on his back. Hope to have an update on that when we come back. All tied up at 3-3. Three, three. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Ford. Maker of vehicles that are built to last. Gateway. Let's talk about your gateway. And by Rush Hour. Starring Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. For the first time in nine years, the RCA Dome sold out for a home opener. Ellis Johnson has been helped off the field, replaced by Tony McCoy. On a second down and seven, Abdul Jabbar, juke move, getting to the outside and getting a first down for the Dolphins. Just shy of the 45 yard line. There's Johnson. Limbering up a little bit. Looks like he may return. Going back to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he's the type of back that Johnson, he's not really flashy, but he gets the job done. Great cutter in congested areas and can get those first downs in the tough yards that you need. Not a big speed guy, but he's a grinder. He's always in there play after play and rarely gets in. And grinding it out so far, nine carries, 45 yards for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. First and ten for Miami Marino, play action. He's got plenty of time. Deep down the field moment by Tyrone Poole. Tremendous read by Tyrone Poole. Plays like Daryl Green for the Washington Redskins. We're going to watch the replay here. Not a big guy. He's out here one-on-one, -on -one, but he can read the play. Look at him. He's guarding the wide receiver at the last minute. He's going to come in front and tip it away. Charles Jordan, the intended receiver. If he hauls that in, he's gone. But it was a great read by Tyrone Poole. Right at the last instant, go in front and tip it away. Second and ten with 9.32 to play. First half. Hand up to the fullback. Pitching. Trying to cut against the grain and nothing doing. Tackled at the 45-yard line. No gain on the play. Al Fontado was there to wrap him up. Got some help from Jeff Harrod. 
And that's surprising that Jimmy Johnson would go to his fullback on this play. He's got the great back in Abdul Jabbar over 2,000 yards his last two years. The speedster John Avery, it's second and 10, and you hand it to the fullback. Three wide receivers for Marino. Abdul Jabbar remains in the backfield on a third and 10. Steps up in the pocket. Marino firing. Found a seam just shy of the secondary. O.J. McDuffie, first down the yardage, gain of 11. It's one thing about Danny Marino. Watch the crease here by the wide receiver. Danny Marino's going to step up in the pocket, get great protection, but there's going to be a little hole. It's going to duck into right there, McDuffie, the guy, his go-to guy. He knows when it's second and long and third and long, he can go to O.J. McDuffie and get a first down. McDuffie has been so reliable. Not exactly a deep threat, but at least there's a chemistry between Marino and McDuffie. Still trying to search for a chemistry with the other receivers. Two catches, 16 yards for McDuffie. Marino throws the deep ball. Came back for the football. A long day Dexter leading forward to the touchdown. Forty-four yard connection. Tyrone Poole beat on the play. Aronde Gaskin is a guy from the Arena League Rookie of the Year. Here's a guy that was in training camp with the Dallas Cowboys a couple of years ago. Almost made the cut, was on the practice squad. But watch the play. Reno's got to drop back and just launch one. And Gaskin is the guy that they want to make a jump ball happen. Four inches taller than the defender Tyrone Poole. Pushes him away right there, jumps for the ball. Look at the power into the end zone. You're not going to arm tackle him. He just dishes Tyrone Poole to the side, leans in for the touchdown. One thing to allow him to make the catch, another to allow him to get into that end zone. Mario, he adds the extra point. And the Dolphins lead the Colts 10-3. 7.59 to play in the second quarter. Jim Morris' team down a touchdown with 7.59 to play in the first half. Aronde Gadsden. First NFL catch. It'll go on the highlight films because he made that happen. Absolutely. Just a one-on-one. -on -one. More physical than the defender, Tyrone Poole. Goes up and gets the ball. They knew about him from a few years ago when he was back in Dallas. Brought him in. Thought he could be a jump end zone. And it's flat to be played. at the line of scrimmage looking around he thought that's what he had he audibleized turns and throws quick drop little hitch pattern but terrell buckley knows that they've been throwing this play the entire preseason red peyton manning red the wide receiver marvin harrison gets a little hand on him cuts in front of him right there tremendous yeah. defensive play that's all study great study scouting. study study great scouting watching tapes he knows what peyton manning does when he makes an audible at the line of scrimmage and he read it perfectly know what else welcome to the nfl young man First interception. But it won't be his last, I have a feeling. It'll be first and goal for the Dolphins when we return. Miami with the lead, and they're knocking on the door once again. 10-3. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Snickers and by Propecia. Talk to your doctor today. Ten three, the Dolphins leading the Colts here at the RCA Dome, and Miami with a first and goal at the four. Take another look at Peyton Manning and the interception. They're trying to keep the offense simple, Mark. Well, they are, and Peyton Manning goes up the line of scrimmage, calls an audible, but that's not the one you want to call. Throws it right out to Marvin Harrison, but Terrell Buckley's in front of him, and that's the time where he wants to go with a hitch pump because the cornerback, Terrell Buckley, stepped in front. That was the opportunity to loft that ball over him on the hitch pump and go for the first down or the touchdown because Harrison was off at the races. There's Dad's first yeah. reaction saying, Peyton, go with the pump. Go with the pump, son. <laughs> Archie's been there so he can relate. Peyton Manning. His first NFL interception. And Miami in business. First and goal at the four. Marino looks, fires, could not get it to McDuffie. Dan Marino now has 386 career touchdown passes. 
to 49 different targets. Aronde Gadsden, the latest. So that's 49 different people that can say they caught a touchdown pass from Danny Marino, and I'm sure that won't be the last. He's not done by any means. Danny Marino will play three or four years in the NFL at least. 55,000 yards and change career passing, tops in the NFL. He's the standard by what quarterbacks go by. 24 regular season records for Marino. Second and goal. Abdul Jabbar Hurdle, and he's in. Touchdown, Dolphins. Stanley Pritchett, the fullback, along with the entire right side of the offensive line. Some help from the tight ends. They made it happen. Look at the blocking here, but then watch the blocking here. They're going to clear it out, stretch the play out. This is an outside play by design. Look at the guys reach and get their blocks on the outside. Boom, right there, stretch it out. Let them look for a hole, finds the hole, takes the crease, steps over a tackler. Touchdown, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. First touchdown of the season for Abdul-Jabbar. He had 15 rushing touchdowns last year. Mare. Adds the extra point, and the Dolphins take a 17-3 lead. Well, this fall, he likes his buddies. He loves his football, and when it comes to comedy, he rules. Kevin James stars in The King of Queens, premiering Monday, September 21st on CBS. Abdul-Jabbar has been the king of touchdowns. A four-yard run, had one receiving touchdown last season, giving him 16 total. When we talked to him yesterday, his response of bringing in a first-round pick, John Avery, at the running back position was, hey, that's great competition. I want to be pushed. I want to prove to everybody that I am the marquee back. I'm the guy that's going to lead the team, but he's going to be my backup. Abdul Jabbar, the scouting report, has been that he lacks that extra gear to be a superstar and that Avery does have that fifth gear but when you get inside the 10 inside the five Abdul Jabbar has got the job done you want a touchdown maker and that's what Kareem Abdul Jabbar is you've got to have somebody that can pound that ball in between the tackles and get you that first down in short yardage and in goal line get you the touchdown and that's Kareem Abdul Jabbar Dolphins with a 17-3 lead Mare kicks it off Baylor from the goal line Bailey is stacked up at the 16-yard line. O.J. Bragantz, the special teams tackle. Well, Peyton Manning making his NFL debut here today. His counterpart, Dan Marino. His thoughts on what Manning's I'm sure facing. He's real excited, uh, and he'll handle it well. He's a he's a guy that has a lot of talent and uh, a guy that's been in uh, a lot of big college football games and, and knows what that feels like. So. Uh, you, you know he's he's been you know made to be in this position right now, and he has the experience, so he'll do well. On the handoff, Manning keeping it on the ground, and this Miami defense now gaining confidence as Jason Taylor sniffed it out. Marshall Falk, loss of a yard. George Hill, the defensive coordinator for the Miami Dolphins, says, hey, these guys have been together for three years in our system now. We've got a lot of speed. Don't have any superstars on this defense. Have a lot of solid players. Their biggest superstars, probably the guy right there you just saw, was Zach Thomas, the middle linebacker. But, hey, they play great as a unit. Eight carries, 15 yards for Falk. Straight back. There's the pump fake. And Ken Dager, the tight end, now getting involved. It's shy of the 20-yard line. Zach Thomas shoving him back. Peyton Manning making the connection to Dilger. Now in the replay, this is the first time that Peyton Manning's been nailed or at least touched after a pass. Completes the pass to his tight end, but right there, gets a little shot at the end of the play and taken down. But hey, this is the NFL. Welcome, Peyton Manning. Manning had that star-studded career at Tennessee, setting school record after school record. Third down. Manning, airing it out, and nobody home. Flag goes down. Torrance Small, the intended receiver, down the sideline. Brock Marion questioning the flag. Number 31, defense. That's a five-yard penalty. Automatic first step. Brock better watch out. You cannot touch an official. That's twice he's gotten away with it. He'll get ejected from the game. 
He's got to control his emotion. Right on the outside, Terrence Small. Right there, you can't engage after five yards. You can't touch him. Brock Marion knows that, and he did on that pass round. Only the second penalty of the game. And the Colts catching a break because I don't think that pass would have been caught. And Jimmy Johnson giving the officials a piece of his mind. He's not a happy camper. Jimmy will give him an earful. Even if he's wrong or his player's wrong, he'll let the officials know that he's protecting his players and he's staying behind them. On a first and ten. Double tight end. Handoff. Fought. There's an opening. But it's quickly closed up as a flag goes down. Shy of a 30-yard line, Marshall Falk. Zach Thomas making the tackle. It'll be brought back. You hear the boo from the crowds. They finally get a big play out of Marshall Falk. He breaks a couple of tackles and squeezes through on a play should have lost yardage John, and they get the holding penalty. Right here, Tarek Glenn. Keep an eye on him. He could be the culprit in there. Holding number 86, offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat the down. First down. But right at the end of the play, you see the tight end, or the wide receiver, I'm sorry, the rookie, Jerome Payton, grabbing a hold of the defender. He's got to know to keep those hands tight. Once the guy crosses his face, let him go. Because what's going to happen is he's going to twist and turn, and the official's always going to see that jersey getting pulled away from the defender. Colts back where they started on a first and 20 at their own 13-yard line. On a handoff. Trying to go up the middle. Not much there for Marshall Falk. Now for an NFL Today report. Let's go to Jim Nance in New York. Ian and Mark, we've talked a lot about Jerry Rice's return. He's got one catch so far, but what about Keyshawn Johnson of the Jets? Five receptions in the first half. This one, Glenn Foley finds Johnson in the end zone. Touchdown, and the Jets lead it now with seven minutes to go first half. Let's go back to Indianapolis. Peyton Manning in a hole, 17-3. Dolphins with a lead. Tick down to the five-minute mark of the second quarter. Gave him one on the play, and Manning could not get to the line of scrimmage in time. And a timeout taken. 17 to 3, Dolphins leading it. Coming up on the NASDAQ Halftime Report, Jim Nance, Marcus Allen, Brett Jones, and George Seifert will have all the scores and highlights. That's coming up on the NASDAQ Halftime Report. Indianapolis with just one timeout remaining. Miami has three. Jim Mora, 12th year as a head coach in the NFL, had 11 successful seasons in New Orleans, 93 and 74, his record with the Saints. Three years in the USFL with Philadelphia and Baltimore. He replaces Lindy Infante, who was here at Indy for two years, went 12 and 20 in those two campaigns. And I am the greatest compliment you can say by a head coach is I had a winning record when I was with the New Orleans Saints. <laughs> That's right. How many guys could say it? One. One. Manny will dump it off to four. Four. Center step move. So difficult to catch in the open field. A number of Miami defenders in on the stop as he crossed the 20-yard line, but it will still be third and long. That's what the Colts are facing. That was a pretty run by Marshall Falk, but he had a lot of help. It was a screen pass to the right, a little dump off screen play, but the offensive linemen helping their buddies, going downfield, getting blocked. They were like bullets coming downfield, 10, 12 yards down the field. Hey, that's team unity. Young offensive line, though. Gotta learn sometime. Defensive backs in there for the Dolphins on a third and 11. And he goes down. Calvin Jackson on a safety blitz. And at the end of that play, you saw Peyton Manning point to the left. Right now, he's telling his offensive line, somebody's got to pick him up. He's not my guy. He's talking to the wide receiver. He's coming right here. Somebody's got him. He's not my guy. Watch Peyton Manning go through the progression right here. Marshall Fox going to the right. No one blocks the safety, Kelvin Jackson, coming out of the backfield. Easy sack, easy prey. Down him. 
Game of firsts. First interception, first sack for Manning. It's a high punt by Gardaki. Bounces down and takes a Miami roll. Colts running in, trying to save the field position, but to no avail. 29-yard punt. Well, Peyton Manning, his first NFL sack. Drew Bledsoe, another former number one pick, reminiscing about his first NFL sack. My first sack was a good one. Uh, Bruce Smith hit me from the blind side, uh, right in the middle of the back. It was one, and uh, it was such a good hit that I ended up being the star of one of his commercials for a couple of years. You know? <laughs> so it was a good one, and, and uh, I actually thought it was kind of cool because he came up to me after the game, you know, and I kind of you know, said, "Hey, nice hit," and he goes, "Yeah, he stood up and took it like a man and got back at me." So that was, you know, it was kind of a cool compliment. In a, in a twisted way. See, you never want to get on a commercial in the wrong way, and you never want to get on a poster. That's forever. Everybody will remember that. Everybody, especially Buffalo and upstate New York, but Peyton Manning's situation, he knew that that wasn't his sack to give up. Someone missed the breakoff. Someone missed the protection pattern, and they're talking about it on the sidelines. Right now, he's entrenched. He's confident on the sidelines that he can do the job, but he's letting everybody know, let's pick it up, guys. We're stinking the joint up. Let's get it together. Protect, block, go back to basics. Five-yard pickup, Marino to John Avery through the air. And a second and five. The Indianapolis 36. And off. Avery trying to get through a hole up the middle. Steve Morrison there to greet him. Not much doing. A lot of traffic for Avery to run through. And third down upcoming. Counting down to three minutes to play in the first half. Miami in control. They lead it 17 to three and they're looking for more. Dime package for the Colts. Three receivers for Marino to work with. And a timeout. Indianapolis blows their final timeout of the first half. And that doesn't bode well for the Indianapolis Colts. When you're in a situation and you burn all your times out, heck, they can get the ball back again with less than two minutes. The offense can go into two minutes. They're going to need a timeout in that period, but they don't have it now. They burn them because of too many guys on the field, taking too much time off the clock before getting to the line of scrimmage. Now they're without a timeout. Young team, and they're trying to find their way, but there certainly has been a lot of confusion so far. CBS Sports coverage of the world's toughest tennis continues on Labor Day. 11 a.m., hope you can join us. Then on Friday, it's the men's doubles and the ladies' semis. On Super Saturday, you'll get the ladies' final and the men's semifinals. And on Sunday, we'll wrap things up with the men's final right here on CBS. Third and three for the Dolphins. Marino's team in front by 14. Hand off Avery, and he's stacked up very quickly. Good pursuit by Robert Blackman, who was there along with Tony McCoy. Robert Blackman's one of those silent leaders on this Indianapolis defense. He's a guy that's been around for a long time, ninth year. Tony McCoy in his seventh year. Not a lot of veterans that have been here on this team. They've got new faces at both cornerback positions. Within the last week, they've signed three linebackers. They're looking for team speed at the linebacking position. And President and General Manager Bill Polian said, hey, we're going to continue to bring in talent if it's out there that can help our football team, whether it's the first week of the regular season or the 15th week of the regular season. A defense that was ranked 10th last year, but 26th against the run. We've hit the two-minute warning. 17-3, to the Dolphins leading the Colts. Seventeen to three, Dolphins in front. Two minutes to play in the first half. Peyton Manning hasn't exactly taken his lumps, but nothing has stood out other than that long pass down the middle of the field that we saw in the second quarter. Well, really, the only thing that stood out negatively is the interception that he threw. Mm -hmm. You know, if he goes with a pump fake on that one, it could be a touchdown. Definitely a big play, but look in the stakes. Orlando Mare will attempt the longest field goal of his NFL career. 51 yards. Mara, no good. Off to the left. He hit a 50-yarder last season. He was trying to top it to no avail. 
Gets good protection. Here's the replay. Good snap. Falls down. Just pulls it a little bit. Tell you what, Alindo Mari's been one of the best kickers in the NFL, particularly last season in the NFL. But on turf last year, he was only three for six. He had 77% of his field goals on grass, three for six on turf. They've had a problem in this dome. And Mark, give the Colts defense some credit because Miami started out with terrific field position and the Colts defense was able to hold on. 14 point lead for the Dolphins. Hand up, fought. Once again, trying that stutter step move. Sean Wooden got him around the ankles. And a gain of just two. Hurry up offense for Peyton Manning. The two minute drill. Stepping up in the pocket, he's in trouble. Manning forced to eat it. At the 42 yard line, Trace Armstrong, the veteran. What Peyton has to learn is when you're in a two minute situation or a nickel situation, when you're back there, step up, throw the ball, get yeah. rid of it. Don't pump fake because the rush is going to get All right. Second sack for the Dolphins defense. Manning, quick throw. And nobody there. Intended receiver Torrance Small. And the Colts take little time off the clock, and they allow that Miami offense to come back on the field and give Dan Marino a crack in the two-minute drill. And I, and I know it's two minutes, and you want to hurry up and get plays off, but they just rushed it a little bit too much in that sequence. Peyton Manning needs to settle down. Even though it's an incomplete pass, get to the line of scrimmage, get everybody set, and go for the first down. They rushed that sequence too much. It will be a learning process for Manning, and it's not as if he has a bunch of veterans surrounding him. He's got a lot of first-year, second-year players on this offensive unit. Gardaki on for the punt. This one is high and deep. Takes a bounce inside the five and out at the six. So the Colts pin the Dolphins back in their own territory. Minute 13 to play, first half, and coming up, the NASDAQ Halftime Report. Jim Nance, Marcus Allen, Brent Jones, and George Seifert back in New York. They'll have all the scores and highlights. It's coming up on the NASDAQ Halftime Report. Here's Howard Mudd, the offensive line coach for the Indianapolis Colts, telling us, guys, hey, let's settle down. Let's get in there. He's got a lot of young players there on the offensive line. He's starting a rookie at the left guard, Steve McKinney. Tarek Glenn played right guard last year. He moved out to left tackle his natural position this year. Tony Mandridge, the right tackle last year, moved to left right guard this year. Adam Meadows, the left tackle last year in his second year, moved to right tackle this year. So wait, 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 you've, wait. Got, you've got a second-year player, a rookie, a seventh-year player in Jay oh. Lundberg. That's the only guy that stayed in the same position last year. Is there going to be a quiz on this? Halftime. I missed it. Marino on a handoff. Abdul Jabbar trying to break out to the clear. First down Miami at the 22-yard line. Tyrone Poole finally got to him. And a 15-yard gain on first down. Dolphins take a timeout. Watch the block in here. This is a nickel run. You spread out the defense. Not that many defenders on the line of scrimmage. You turn out. Little draw play. Look at the lane he's got to run through. Good blocking on the outside. The line gets a good push. It's a good hole for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to run through. And he just takes it to daylight. Jim Mora's reaction. Fill in your own caption. Abdul Jabbar, 11 carries, 66 yards. And we cannot pound this point home enough because Jimmy Johnson's done it the entire preseason. They want to run. They want to establish the run. And he feels that that's going to make Dan Marino better. Similar to what Denver went through last season in winning the Super Bowl. They had Terrell Davis. And Dan Marino feels the same way. He's looking back and saying, this could extend my career. I want to win one Super Bowl before it's over. If we've got to run it to do it, let's run it. First and 10 at the 22. They run it again. Abdul Jabbar. And he gets wrapped up by Elijah Alexander with under a minute to play of the second quarter. It's a gain of four. And the Dolphins are going to be content to run the ball, run the ball, run the clock out. There's no hurry. They're taking their time getting back to the huddle, letting the clock run out, setting for the next play. Patience, patience, patience. Jimmy Johnson, great coach right there. He can control his coaches very well. Look at the play selection. They wanted to be balanced. 18 rush, 17 pass. Kippy Brown, the offensive coordinator, has to be happy up in the box. Brown replacing Gary Stevens, who held the job for nine years. Many felt this offense was just antiquated, and they had to make a change. One of those who felt that way, the head coach. Marino will throw. Whoa, throws it away. 
Ed Perry, the intended receiver, if Marino was even trying to get to him, with just 15 seconds to play, first half. And going back to Jimmy Johnson, one thing that Jim Mora had said about Jimmy Johnson, he likes the way he coaches his coaches because he knows everything about the coaches, what their players are doing, what position they're doing, what they're doing on the field, what the coaches are supposed to be teaching the players. He simplified the offense this year. The defense is back to the basics. He wants to be in control of everything, so he knows where players are supposed to be and when they're supposed to be there. He did put some pressure on himself when he got this job. He said they would be in the Super Bowl in three years. This is the third year of his tenure. Marino over the middle. And it's incomplete. Perry, the intended receiver. Belzer was there with the coverage. And only 10 seconds left on the clock here in the second quarter. But Johnson has since changed his statement just a little bit, stating that this would be the best team of the three years, and he's correct in making that statement. This is the best team he's had in the three years here in Miami. And one of the reasons why he modified that, he thought he could come in and take the playbook and take that playbook offensively and make these guys win. This year he said he flew the playbook out the window and he went with his own playbook and simplified things. Wilmsmeyer the punt. Bailey the return. And time has run out here in the first half. The debut of Peyton Manning in the NFL. But it's been the Miami Dolphins here in the first half. They're in control behind 16-year veteran Dan Marino. End of the first half, Miami leads it 17-3. The NASDAQ halftime report. Back at the RCA Dome, it is halftime. And the Miami Dolphins in front of the Indianapolis Colts, 17-3. Ian Eagle joining you along with Mark May here in Indy. The return of the NFL on CBS. And, of course, the storyline here, Peyton Manning, his first NFL start, but sometimes the script changes as you go along, and especially when Dan Marino is the other leading actor on the other side of the field, and Marino and the Dolphins have certainly had their way offensively in this first half. Well, absolutely. It's the master against yeah. the pupil, and Danny has been the master thus far. He hasn't turned the ball over. He's moved the ball offensively. Indianapolis, on the other hand, they've turned the ball over. Peyton Manning's thrown an interception, and you're seeing a situation here where this is a refined team yeah. that knows not to turn over the ball in Miami, and Indianapolis, this is a team that's just come together, and they're still feeling each other out. Well, we've talked about the poise that Peyton Manning has shown, but certainly it's going to be a learning experience, including a number of firsts, including his first interception. Well, this one, he should have pumped it and released it. You can see the real estate out there with Harrison, but hey... Terrell Buckley's right there for the interception. He read it from day one. Great film work, great preparation. He knew where he was going with that ball and stepped in front of Marvin Harrison for the interception. Take a look at the halftime stats. Time of possession in Miami's favor. See the passing yards, 73 for Peyton Manning. But again, the balance. We've talked about it throughout the broadcast, and that's exactly what the Dolphins have offensively. And what's key to that is they wanted to average over four yards a clip rushing. It's 5.3 per rush, and Jimmy Johnson's definitely happy with that. Alindo well, Mare will start things off here in the third quarter. End over end. Aaron Bailey will take a knee and a touchback. Overall, though, what have you thought about Peyton in this first half of action? Well, in the first half, I thought he was very calm to start the game off. They gave him some plays that he can relax in, move the offense. That's exactly what he did. But then when they started to get cute, rolling him out of the pocket, have him do things that he's not accustomed to, then they ran into problems. And now he just needs to settle down. I've been in this position before. When you're down at halftime by a couple of touchdowns, they have to come out, take a deep breath, be patient, stick to their game plan. First and 10 for the Colts from the 20. A trail by two touchdowns. Just underway here in the third quarter. Hand off to Marshall Falk. Trying that right side. Tim Bowens was there defensively along with a host of other tacklers for the Dolphins. A gain of about four. And Marshall Falk, here's a guy that he's got to give support to Peyton Manning. Starts the game off with his first reception of Peyton Manning in a National Football League regular season game. They've got to get him the ball. He's the marquee guy. They've got to grind it with it and grind it with him. Make sure he's got the ball. Nine rushes, 15 yards, 16 yards. He needs to at least elevate that to 30 or 40 yards. Falk, a fellow New Orleans native. Manning looks off of Falk, tries to squeeze it into double coverage, but could not make the connection to Jerome Payton. Sam Madison was there. 
Falk actually sold popcorn at the Superdome. And baby, look at him now in the National Football League. But here, double coverage. Peyton knows he's trying to zip that ball in there, right there. Don't try to weed that ball into to, to two defenders. There's got to be somebody open. When you see two on one, Peyton, someone has to be open, and he knows that. If he could have gotten the ball there a step quicker, could have been a completion, but he hesitated too long. Passing situation on a third and six. Falk alone set back, three receivers. Manning straight back, quick throw on a cross. And he's got Marvin Harrison. First down, Indy. The Miami Dolphins know this. That's his pacifier. That's his blanket. It's his security blanket. When he needs a play, he's got to go to Marvin Harrison. That's his guy. They're on the same page. In the preseason, 11 receptions, 296 yards. But today, three receptions, 68 yards. Marvin Harrison's got to be his go-to guy when he needs a big play. The Dolphins know that. They will start double covering Marvin Harrison. Harrison, good hands. He's willing to go over the middle. A legitimate deep threat for this Colts offense. First and 10 at the 33. On the end around, Jerome Pafin. Zach Thomas able to sniff it out. Modest gain of three. Zach Thomas is their leader. He's their junior sayout. He's a guy that's not going to miss plays. He's going to play all the time. He's going to go sideline to sideline. He's not fooled by this reverse. Watch Zach Thomas make the beat. Shuffle, shuffle, boom, right there, make the hit. You're not going to fool that young man. Second and seven at the 36. Thomas, what a tough competitor. So instinctive at that middle linebacker position. Manning. Play action. Looks. Throws. And he's got it to Jerome Payton. First down yardage for Indy, a 10-yard gain. Jerome Payton is the type of receiver that can make the big play. They say he does outstanding things in practice. He just needs to do it in the game. He's been injured a little bit. Watch Peyton Manning step back in the pocket here. He's getting excellent protection from the offensive line. Fake right there to Marshall Falk. Rolls to his right. Pump, pump. Look at the feet. All of a sudden, he sees Payton open. Flies the ball in there. It's a great zoom pass. Gets it for the completion for the first down. Second round draft pick with his second reception. Marshall Falk is met by Zach Thomas. You're not going to fool Zach Thomas with a straight-ahead dive play. The leading tackler on this team the last two years broke his leg last year and still was the leading tackler on this defense. He's the type of guy that it doesn't matter where the play's going, he's going to find a way to smell it out. Talking to Howard Mudd, the offensive line coach of the Indianapolis Colts, he says he's their junior sayout. He's the guy that makes the defense go. No matter where he goes, that's where the play is because he's always going to be around the ball. Gain of one, a second and nine. First drive of the third quarter, Manning up, pump fake, looking long. Marvin Harrison stride for stride with Terrell Buckley. And a flag is in the backfield. A little extracurricular activity at the end of the play, and it's going to cost the Indianapolis Colts. Tarek Glenn in a little fight, little pushing after the ball's thrown with Jason Taylor. As the officials weeded out, there's Tarek Glenn. He played right tackle last year. They moved him to the left tackle, was drafted as a left tackle, but held out of last year's training camp. But he's getting a mouthful and a taste of the wide rusher in Jason Taylor. He is their cobra, what they call a guy that can roll around and rush the passer wherever they see fit. Oh, personal foul against the Dolphins. Bob McElwee will sort it out for us in a moment. Marvin Harrison going one-on-one -on, -one on the play with Terrell Buckley. Contact, not very much at the end of the play. But the fight, the flag was thrown with the fight in the backfield. Now they're trying to sort it out. It looked like it was going against Tarek Glenn initially, and now they're saying it's going against Miami. Well, Glenn's reaction initially led you to believe that it was definitely on the Colts. Absolutely. They're still trying first to sort no it out. foul. Unnecessary roughness. 99 defense. 15 yards. First down. They'll tell you the key to that iron is don't be the last guy to throw the punch. Be the first guy. Here it is. Right here. These guys right there. They're tangling. They're pushing. Glenn's doing a good job. He's got his hands in tight. Little push at the end. Right there. Jason Taylor has his face mask. Now he's pushing. Shoving has the face mask. That's a good call by the officiating crew. It will cost Miami. 
Jason Taylor will now go to the sidelines, replaced by Daniel Stubbs. And a first and ten for the Colts at the Dolphins' 38. This drive continues. Play action. Manning. Over the middle, Marcus Pollard. Just shy of the 25-yard line. Pollard trying to get these fans into it. A 13-yard pickup. Sometimes all it takes is a penalty to get you ignited. The last penalty was called on the Dolphins. But right here, Manning gets outstanding protection on the play action by his offensive line. Can shuffle, shuffle, set, and fire that ball across the middle to the backup tight end. Marcus Pollard, first down for the Colts. But when you get those penalties, particularly first and foul penalties, it helps the offense move the ball. They have the emotional lift at this point. Pollard setting up as a receiver. Once again, an audible for Peyton Manning. Last time it crossed him with the interception. High arcing delivery over the shoulder grab. He was out of bounds, Marvin Harrison, in a matchup with Buckley. But this time, Ian, as you saw, when he got up there to call the audible, this time he did not throw that ball short. He dropped that ball over the top, so there's no way they could read the hitch. Right there, caught the ball out of bounds. But good play by Manny. Got up there, called the audible. The defense bit on it, but this time he didn't go for the little short pass. He went over the top, and it was close to being a reception. Now he can read the defense a little better. He looks more comfortable in the pocket. Tenth play of the drive, upcoming. A second and ten at the Miami 25. Man in motion, fall. Play action. Roll out for Manny. Trying to buy himself some time. And I'll throw it away. I am. We talked about this earlier. And Peyton Manning, he's the classic pocket quarterback. Why roll him out of the pocket? Flag down on the play. A late flag at that. Quarterback was out of the pocket. No foul because the quarterback was out of the pocket. Good call by the officiating crew. Once you break that pocket, you can get your hands on those wide receivers out there. The defenders can. And they did in that instance. That's just a little bit low and probably should have been a penalty on the defense. But once you break that pocket, hey, free game. Marvin Harrison and Terrell Buckley, they've been going head-to-head -head all day long. Small checks in as a third receiver. On a third and ten. Manning stepping forward. Flips it out and kicks off. Off the deflection, Daryl Gardner. Marshall Falk bobbling the football. And Manning just picked up his second INT. It'll go down in the books as an interception for Peyton Manning. But Marshall Falk has to catch this ball. When a defensive tackle comes up, now look at big Daryl Gardner drop off into coverage. Zone blitz, drop it off into coverage. Marshall Falk has to pull that ball in, but there's no way he's going to bring down Gardner. Look at Gardner dragging him along. Dolphins football when we come back. They lead it 17-3 in the third. Not exactly what the Manning family visualized when they came inside the RCA Dome here this afternoon. Second interception for Peyton Manning. This one wasn't his fault. Marshall Falk couldn't hold on to it. And a turnover. Marino on the give to Abdul Jabbar spinning his way ahead. Just shy of the 30-yard line. Richmond Webb pulling and making the hole for Abdul Jabbar to squeeze through. And a gain of eight. And it's good to see that the Miami Dolphin linemen, not only great running block blockers at the point attack, they can pull and move on the run and get blocks by running that counter thread. 13 carries, 77 yards. That's music to Jimmy Johnson's ears. Exactly what he wanted here today. Establish the running game. They've done just that. On a second and two, it's a full ball again, this time trying the left side. Going to the outside, and the Colts were there. Dan Footman in pursuit. That was a nice play by Dan Footman going across the face of seven-time Pro Bowler Richmond Webb and widening the play out. Had ten and a half sacks last year. Solid season for Footman. He just wants to duplicate what he did last year. A lot of people say that, hey, he didn't have a lot of sacks. It was one of those things that was a fluke. He never had that many sacks before in his career. But talking to him yesterday, he said, I'm going to do it again this year. I want at least 12 sacks. A third and two. 
three wide receivers. Marino, quick drop, quick throw, and a first down. Great play by Ed Perry on the second effort. Monty Montgomery had a chance to hold him just prior to the marker. He couldn't do it. Ned Perry's their second tight end. They like to use him as an H-back. An H-back is a smaller tight end that can catch the ball and move. Here, just as a little fly out to the outside, he's open, but makes a great move for a big man, spinning away from the defender and tiptoeing down the line of scrimmage. How about Montgomery not getting the arms around the body, going for the legs? It was a big enough target to get. I'm surprised he missed it. First and ten for the Dolphins. Abdul Jabbar on the ground. Jason Belzer, the stop. Now for an NFL Today report. Let's go to Jim Nance in New York. Well, I on a 67-yard pass play. Set it up at the six. Leaf to Brian Still. And Leaf beats Manning to the end zone. Doug Flutie's in at quarterback for the Bills. Let's go back to Ian and Mark. Time ticking away here in the third, Jim. 8-10 to play. With the Dolphins on the road, leading Indianapolis 17-3. Dolphins have it a second and ten at their own 39. Stanley Pritchett, the motion man. Colts prowl the line of scrimmage. Abdul Jabbar up the middle for about three. Jeff Harrod, the middle linebacker, coming over to make the tackle. And although it's early in the third quarter, Jimmy Johnson's got that mindset that, hey, we're going to line up two tight ends, hit you in the mouth, grind it out, play a little smash mouth football, and try to move the chains. Keeping our eye on the rush pass comparison, 22 to 20. You can talk about it, you can plan on it, but you, you have to do it. You got to execute it, and that's what the Dolphins have done. John Avery now in the game for the Dolphins. Marino working out of a shotgun at a third and seven. Marino, plenty of time. You cannot give him that kind of time, and he makes the Colts defense pay. First down throw to Lamar Thomas. 13-yard game. And watch Danny Marino, calm and cool, shotgun in the pocket, drifts back, look at the feet, great feet, sees his wide receiver open, the flick of the pass, nobody near him, nobody touching Danny Marino, a clean jersey. Outside, Lamar Thomas, right here, he's pressed on the line of scrimmage, gets a push off right there, the little slap of the hand, he's open. First down Miami Dolphins. No sacks for the Indianapolis Colts today, and pretty much what you just saw in that last play, that's been the story all day long. They haven't gotten close to Marino. 27 games against the Colts, only 27 sacks by the Indianapolis Colts. On the handoff, Avery. He's upended at the 42-yard line by Morrison and Blackman. Gain of three. There's a little frustration now that you see by the Indianapolis Colts defense. They're doing everything they possibly can. They're cheating guys close to the line of scrimmage, moving their linebackers up, getting guys in a teacup, but Miami's just getting that push. And Jimmy Johnson has to be a happy camper on the sidelines. He brought in the right guard, Kevin Donnelly, just for this fact. So if there's situations they need to get three or four yards, particularly on first down to take the pressure off of Danny Marino, that's exactly why they got him in free agency. Also should mention the addition of Mark Dixon at the left guard, a CFL player, getting an opportunity. He's made the most of it. Play action. Incomplete. Ed Perry, the intended receiver. Third and seven coming up. Talking to offensive coordinator Kippy Brown, they thought that Mark Dixon was just a flash in the pan. He was the best guy in the Canadian Football League. He'd been in and out of training camps, played in the European League. And here's Kippy Brown right here, the offensive coordinator for the Miami Dolphins, but they thought that the left guard, Mark Dixon, would fall on his face and fall out of favor during training camp, that he wasn't big enough, wasn't strong enough, hadn't been in the NFL competition, but he's the biggest surprise of the entire training camp for one, Kippy Brown, the offensive coordinator, and two, Jimmy Johnson, the head coach. Ninth play of the drive for the Miami Dolphins. On third and seven, Marino, bobble, and incomplete. It hit the ground. It's a great individual effort by Robert Blackman, but that ball hit the turf. On the outside, here's a look at that near catch reception. Has it in his hands, but it gets bobbled. But look at the athletic ability right there, off his foot, off his leg, off his elbow. I don't know if that ball hit the ground. You know what? On a second look, you might be right. You might be right. I think that was an interception. 
an excellent play by Robert Blackman. That's incredible. That's a highlight play. First glance, I thought it hit the turf. Just the side of the football. We'd have to get another look at that. Here's the putt. Wilmsmeyer, Bailey back deep, angled off to the side. And dribbling out of bounds at about the 22. Third quarter action. Indy in a hole. Sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. Midas. For quality service, visit your neighborhood Midas today. And by the NASDAQ stock market. The Miami Dolphins have lost four consecutive games here at the RCA Dome. They're looking to change that trend this afternoon. They lead the Colts 17-3 with 5.29 to play in the third. Indianapolis football, a first and ten at their own 21. Manning, he's got Dilger. Brought down at the 25. Forward progress should get him to around the 27. Let's go back, though, to the punt. And you make the call, Mark. And this is a different angle looking at it. It does hit the ground. Great call by the officials right there at this angle. It looks like it hit his leg and bounced up, but it did hit the turf. Good call by the officiating crew. That was the third down play with O.J. McDuffie, the intended receiver. Robert Blackman did a terrific job, but it did hit the turf, and the right call was made. Second and three after the pickup of seven. On the pitch out. Got some blockers. And down at the 36. First down to Colts. Tarek Glenn laying out a block for Marshall Falk. Good job by Marshall Falk. Stringing it out. Watch the tackle pull around right there, Tarek Glenn, and get a good block. But Ken Dilger, the tight end, strings out Aaron Taylor right there. Look at the big guy come around. Just the hand fits enough to get Marshall Falk's vision to cut the ball to the inside. Nice seven-yard gain by Marshall Falk. And that is his longest gain of the day on the ground. He's had a couple via the air. Got a first and ten. Manning eluding the rush. Finding his man, Marvin Harrison. And a flag down on the play. After the 11-yard pickup. Marvin pushed off at the end of the play to get open. I'm sure that's going to be the call to push off. Colts fans voicing their disapproval. Hey, you're down by 14 points late in the third quarter. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. I'm learning a little bit more about your Offensive philosophies as a player. Number 88, 10-yard penalty, repeat the down, first down. Do you think I got the three Super Bowls by being a nice guy? Well, you know, you come across as such a nice guy when we sit down for dinner, but I have not read the Hogs Handbook, <laughs> which I'm sure I'll get a copy of for week two. Hey, whatever it takes to win. That's Marvin Harrison trying to come up with a big play, trying to help the team, but he got caught. There's a lot of infractions that happen down there on the field that never get seen. That was one that came. Someone saw it. They bring it back 10 yards. A first and 20. From the Colts, 26. Under four minutes to play in the third. This is Falk getting bounced around as he crosses the line of scrimmage for a gain of one. Tim Bowens. Good coverage. And Tim Bowens is sitting out the entire training camp, came in late, signed a contract, He's not in 100% condition. They say he needs to lose about another 12 or 15 pounds, but the way that the Miami Dolphins rotate their tackles and their ends, it keeps them fresh, and that's his fourth tackle this evening. Starting right corner, Sam Madison not on the field. A sore knee. His return is questionable. We've seen Patrick Sertain, the rookie out of Southern Miss. Maddox stepping up in the pocket. Maddox unloading. Maddox and Marcus Collie, the tight end, into Miami territory. Great job in the pocket by Peyton Manning. Here he is. He fakes to Marshall Falk. He gets an excellent look at Marshall Falk blocking the defensive lineman. Manning steps up, pushes his lineman out of the way, and gets a mouthful of Rydell by Daryl Gardner, but still completes the pass downfield to his backup tight end, Marcus Pollard. And that's excellent concentration by Pollard pulling that ball in. Pollard, the celebration following the reception. Archie Manning watching from the stands. A first and ten at the 41. Play fake. Manning. Fellow rookie Jerome Payton on the receiving end. 
First down, Colt Patrick Sertain, another rookie with the coverage. It's a 12-yard pickup. Here's the other rookie on the outside, Jerome Payton, one-on-one with a defender. He's got to plant and turn around. They're going against the backup over there. Patrick Sertain, he's a rookie. They're going to take his shots at rookie to rookie. They like Jerome Payton. They think he can be something special. Second catch, 22 yards. You see Manning's numbers, the two interceptions. The percentage, though, strong, 12 of 20. There's the pump. The throw over the middle. He wanted to make the connection to Pollard. Could not. And he had a sliver of an opening. Miami comes with a double blow. They're going to bring their linebackers in the middle right there. But it's good pickup right here. Look at Marshall Falk looking for somebody in the block. The offensive line squeezes everybody down. There was a little opening that quarterback Peyton Manning tried to drop that ball in there. Very close, but a good job of protection by the offensive line. And Marshall Falk, everybody rallying together to protect this young quarterback, Peyton Manning. The post pattern worked. It was just a matter of getting the football a little closer to the body of Polly. That might be a play that you stow away and bring back. Hand up through the opening and crossing the 20-yard line. Looks like a first down, gain of 11. Marshall Falk, excellent vision. He takes the ball to the right and brings it back. Watch these guys on their cutoff, making sure he's got a lane to run through. Not a lot on the outside, but look at Marshall Falk. He's got to find a hole right there. Great cutoffs on the backside by the offensive line and tight ends. Marshall Falk sees the crease, hits it. Another first down for the Indianapolis Colts. 15 rushes, 42 yards for that man right there, Marshall Falk. Rob Marion with a tackle as Sam Madison returns for Miami. Fake of the reverse. Manning, plenty of time. Safety valve is Pollard. Down inside the 10. And this crowd is getting juiced up. And I, we talked about heroes for this team, Peyton Manning, Marshall Falk, Marvin Harrison, but the hero thus far has been Marcus Pollard, the tight end. Look at him drift out there, gets a block on the defensive end, pushes off, says, Peyton, I'm open, I'm right here. Peyton sees him, rolls out, dumps him the ball. Look at him turn the ball downfield, beats Bowens, takes the ball and slams it up for an eight-yard game. Second and two at the 10. Falk trying to sidestep on the interior. Tim Bowens was there to greet him. No gain on the play. Final seconds here in the third. Peyton Manning looking for his first NFL touchdown. We will have to wait until the fourth. End of the third quarter, Miami 17. Indianapolis 3 will return to the RCA Dome after a word from your local station. Iron Eagle, Mark May, rejoining you from the RCA Dome. It's the start of the fourth quarter. And Indianapolis trying to get back into this football game. A third and one at the Miami 9. Manning, handoff, putting the head down. He had to get to the eight-yard line. And just about everybody was there defensively for the Dolphins. He didn't get it. And this call, I disagree with. At this point in the game, there's a lot of time left. You're at home, Manning's first start, inches away from first down, go for the first down. That is not what they'll do. It's too conservative. This is a team coming out the three and 13 season. You've got to start laying the foundation for winning or at least taking a chance and going after that. Mike Vanderchat hit a 51 yard field goal. His first field goal as an NFL kicker. 27 yard attempt. He booms it through. And the Colts cut into the Miami lead, but these fans wanted to see this offense go for it. They'll have to settle for the field goal. It's 17-6, Miami. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by AC Delco Automotive Parts. AC Delco. If you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. And by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you that fresh beer tastes better. John Avery, the rookie, getting across the 25-yard line and ahead to the 28. Dan Marino and the Dolphins return to the field when we come back. 
three Indianapolis turnovers. Colts trailing 17 to 6. Those turnovers turning into seven Miami points. No turnovers for the Dolphins. They've gotten the running game in gear to open up the 1998 season. Looking to win their seventh consecutive season opener. The longest streak of the NFL. The Dolphins have it. Six straight. On a first and ten at the play. Here's Jabbar behind the line of scrimmage. Tony McCoy was there. Tremendous penetration by Tony McCoy. You can't have a successful running play at the point of attack when a defender gets in the backfield and Tony McCoy got in the backfield and disrupted the running play, made the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Watch McCoy. He's going to come up there, get across the face, and just penetrate, penetrate into the backfield, wraps up Jabbar in the backfield. That's just great defensive line play. Loss of a yard. Working out of the shotgun. Dumps it off. Brought in by Abdul Jabbar, shy of a first down. Now for an NFL Today report. Let's go to Jim Nance in New York. Hi, and thank you. Check it out. Fourth and one. San Francisco goes for it. And they go to the old go to man, Jerry Rice, into the end zone. The extra point, however, was deflected. So the Jets lead by one. And let's go back now to Indianapolis. Dolphins facing a third down and one. Tight formation. Double tight end. And a one tackle. Crossing the 35, but he did not get first down yardage. Elijah Alexander there defensively. Dan Footman getting to him first. Watch Dan Footman penetrate in the backfield. He's going to slice right up the field and get to the backfield of the Miami Dolphins. He's going to be the first guy to get a hit. Watch him. Goes right by Richmond. Webb, the all-pro defender, gets in the backfield. His arms around running back Kareem Abdul-Jabbar enough to slow him down for the other defenders to converge on the play. Klaus Wilmsmeyer, the punt. Short punt. Taking an Indianapolis roll, and it's down right around the 32-yard line. That's where the Colts will have it after the 31-yard punt. 17 to 6. Dolphins win the lead. Back in Indianapolis, 12:02 to play in the fourth quarter. What kind of numbers will Peyton Manning be compared to here in his first season? Well, other number one draft picks that played the quarterback position, and their numbers in their first years nothing to really write home about not a good initial start but you'll see a couple quarterbacks here john elway been to super bowls won him troy aikman been to super bowls won him drew bledsoe has been to super bowl and looking for his first super bowl victory so he's got a lot to look forward to saying hey those guys didn't have great starts in the nfl but most of them got the super bowls that's my goal Peyton Manning signed a six-year, $48 million deal that included an $11.5 million signing bonus. It's actually named after his great uncle, a Mississippi cotton farmer. In addition to the pressure of being the number one pick, he has that added pressure of his last name. Watching, watching. First and 10 at the 24. Nothing doing. Zach Thomas sniffing it out. Marshall Falk had nowhere to run. NFL Today report. Let's go to Jim Nance in New York. Well, fellas, Rob Johnson, Buffalo starting quarterbacks in the locker room, getting stitches after a blow to the chin. So Doug Flutie has come in. And look at this. He puts the Bills on the board for the first time. Andre Reid catches it. Flutie's first touchdown pass in the league since 1989. Let's go back to Ian and Martin. Well, we'll see the Buffalo Bills next week as they travel down to South Florida to meet the Miami Dolphins. Quick throw. Terrell Buckley had a chance at an interception and probably had an opportunity to bring that one back for six. And that's that hitch pattern that he threw his first interception on. Peyton has to keep his eye on this. Watch Peyton. He's going to take the two, three steps, boom, plant and throw out. That cost him earlier in the game with the interception. Buckley read it again. He's got to go with the pump. Pump the ball, go over the top. 
And that's the one thing that, that a number of the Miami defenders mentioned, that pump fit can be so elusive if you buy it. Something they saw on film from Manning, a third and a left. Manning airing it out deep. Morgan has it and the catch into Miami territory. by Marvin Harrison. Here's the move. A good outside fake. Come back to the inside. Runs by Buckley. He's looking for help. The safety gets there too late. But Marvin Harrison, we said it before. I'll say it again. When Peyton Manning needs a big play, he's going to that man right there, Marvin Harrison. Four receptions, 107 yards on the afternoon. First and 10. At the 43. Play action. Manning, sideline right. Brought in by Payton and a flag down. First down yardage for the Colts. We'll see what the flag means. Jerome Payton, the rookie, pushing off on the play, trying to make things happen. You can see Jim Moore is not that upset because his players are trying to make things happen. Here's Payton on the play. Right there, he's one-on-one. -on -one. Got to get a little push off there. Not that bad. That's part of football. Let him play. I can see if he had both hands on him and threw him down, but he was in his running path before he made the move. Instead of a first and 10 right around the 30-yard line, it's a first and 20. Back at their own 47. Not many penalties so far today. Manning, straight back. Short throw to Falk. The Dolphins were there defensively. And another flag goes down. Tim Bowens with a tackle on Falk. This one's going to go against Miami. Here's Jimmy giving him an ear for the Illegal hands to the face. 29 deep. Sam Madison. Here's Sam Madison taking a look at it. Jimmy's letting him know. Get those hands out of the face. Second year out of Louisville. He's the trash talker on the team. He's always been that way in college. Now in the NFL, his teammates say every time he's up against a wide receiver, he's going to talk to him the entire game. Let him know that he's going to be on him the entire game long and he's not going to catch any passes on Sam Madison. Dolphins have a chance to produce a pretty good secondary this season. See how things pan out along the way. Manning hits some trouble rolling out and sacked. Derek Rogers. Third time Manning has gone down. The Colts allowed an AFC high 62 sacks last season. And that play was speed, speed, speed. The speed of Derek Rogers right here. You're going to watch him. He's going to beat Terrick Glenn right across his face, up the field. Glenn's got to slide out. Watch him on the outside. Slide out. He's got to get his head across. Peyton Manning never had a chance. Big loss on the play. Second and 19. The give to Falk. Dolphins. They're just all over Marshall Falk in this game. Robert Jones, linebacker, free agent from St. Louis, was there first. Falk has not been able to get the running game going. That's one thing about this Miami defense. Not only Jimmy Johnson preaching speed and hustling to the ball, they've been more aggressive this preseason because they've got the confidence. It's their third year together. They're bringing those safeties up the press. They're letting those linebackers run all over the field and not letting a team get big plays. If they've got a play out there in the flat, you're going to see 11 people hustle to the ball and on the table. Six carries for the Colts for a minus yardage. That one was a loss of two and a third and 21. Jason Taylor. I'm not sure what that is. Miami Dolphins, they have what's called their Cobra defense. They let Jason Taylor roll. He can go any place where he wants to go to find the weak link. Out here, you're going to see Taylor go by Adam Meadows right there. He beat Adam Meadows last year when he was on the left side for two touchdown passes. Look at the stunt. Taylor comes around. He gets beat across his face, goes scot-free, and on the sack on Peyton Manning. They've got to switch that off. Meadows has to get off the ball. A Merton Hanks-like reaction. The punt from Gardaki. 
Jordan gets across the 20-yard line. Tim Houck making the stop on special teams, a 53-yard punt. Eight-yard return and a flag down on the play. Pulling on the face mask. Chris Hetherington called on the face mask penalty. Penalty's really not a story for most of this game, but now in the fourth, a couple that have really cost the Colts. They had a first down pass called back because of offensive pass interference. And now Hetherington caught with a face mask penalty. Personal foul, 44 on the kicking team, grabbing and twisting the face mask. That's a 15 yard penalty, replay fourth down. Gotta make him kick it again. One of these areas this team has to settle down. They've had a bad series offensively. They got a big play. The connection between quarterback Peyton Manning and Marsh in a wide receiver Marvin Harrison, but they can't keep going backwards, backwards, backwards. Here's the infraction. There's Chris Cardocki, the punter, going down the field. And Chris Hetherington caught. Fifth penalty. Costing the Colts 50 yards. 8.29 left in the fourth. Special team time now for the Indianapolis Colts. Kevin Spencer not happy what he saw on that play. The Colts are forced to kick it again. This time they're much deeper. Guard Dockey. Jordan the deep man. Sailing kick. Caught at the 27. Jordan. Covered by the coach at the 40. Bradford Banta. Go figure. The name of the game, turnovers. The crowd's into this. They enjoy it. They know that they still have a chance in this game. But turnovers, turnovers, turnovers will kill you. Now they've got an opportunity. They've got to shake off that last series. This offensive bunch of the Indianapolis Colts and concentrate on getting this ball into the end zone. Got to take a look at the replay. Return man's taking it straight up, makes a move, but it's going to get nailed right there on the ball. Great coverage by the Indianapolis Colts on their special teams. Michael Barber, number 53, had his head right on the ball. Good pursuit, good tackle, nice turnover for the Indianapolis Colts. The snapper Vanta with the recovery. This is tough. Marshall Falk going to the outside on first down. And now some momentum, a gain of eight. If not for the penalty called on Hetherington, Miami's got the football. Absolutely. Taking a chance, going back, backing them up, trying to get better field position, but you can never count on turnovers, particularly that guy right there. He knows turnovers will kill you, and he hates them, and I guarantee he lets every player on that sideline know to hold on to the football after there's a turnover committed by the golf. Best field position of the day for the Colts. One back set, four. Dolphins were there as Falk was held up just shy of a 30-yard line. He needed to get two. Looks like he has enough for the first down. Robert Jones in on the stop. I'm going to bring it in for the measurement. This is the time of the game where Marshall Falk, he's the marquee offensive player. They've got to put the ball in his hands. Whether it be running the ball out of the backfield or catching it out of the backfield, he's got to have the ball. First down, Indy. Plenty of time left. 7.36 showing. We're in the fourth quarter. Colts can get themselves right back into this game with a touchdown. They have a pair of field goals from Mike Vanderjack. Falk has been held in check just 50 yards, 21 carries. Three wide receiver set. Play action. Manning. He's got time. Under through the receiver. But Payton came back for it. Sam Madison with the coverage. Good job of concentrating by the rookie, Jerome Payton. He's the guy that in practice, we talked about before, he makes those type of catches, the hard catches. That's why he's starting as a rookie. That's his third reception, 28 yards. Seven-yard gain on that play. Second and three for the Colts. Falk on the handoff. Marshall Falk 
had nowhere to run because of Sean Wooden. Darting through to make the tackle. Loss of a couple. Now watch the penetration by the defense upfield. That's what kills the play. Jason Taylor right there gets on the soft shoulder. Marshall Falk has to take the ball wider. He did not want to take the ball that wide. It was the penetration by the defense made him string it out. It allows the defenders to catch up and make the tackle. Line of scrimmage is the 26. A third and five for Indy. Offensively, it's been all Indianapolis in the second half, but we really have not seen the results on the scoreboard. Just a field goal to show for it. Manning, quick drop, quick throw. First down, Colts. Fifteen-yard pass play. Ball down at the 11. Solid play by Peyton Manning. Look at the motion right here. It's a hot read by Manning. Here comes the blitz. Peyton breaks it off. He's alert for it. Beats the defender on the tackle. Stays on his feet. Goes down the field for the first down for the Indianapolis Colts. Brock Marion right there. He was brought in to be a leader. He's the guy that has to st stabilize the defensive backfield. He should make those tackles, but Peyton beats him on the play for the first down. They can still get a first down. Ball spotted just outside the 10. Hand off. Clock. Marshall Falk inside the five. Steve McKinney laying out the block. And a second and three up coming at the four. This is low and in your face. Marshall Falk, he's going to take the ball to his right, make a great cut there. Look at the vision of cutback. Some of his biggest runs this afternoon have come on the cutback block. He'll lead the defense to his right, cut it back to his left as soon as he sees an opening. Tremendous vision by Marshall Falk. Under five minutes to play in the fourth. An 11-point deficit. Second and three from the four. Manning. Falk again trying to find an opening up the middle. But Jason Taylor was there defensively. He got him from behind. Jason Taylor made the tackle. But the big guy, Tim Bowens, watch his penetration on this play. He's the guy that really makes this play go. Look at him. He's going to fight through a double team, get in the backfield. Marshall Falk has to cut it back. But Jason Taylor holds his ground and contains like he's supposed to. Makes the tackle. We'll call it a third and two from the Miami three. Three receiver look for the Colts. Falk alone setback. Manning. Quick throw to the end zone. Marvin Harrison, the intended receiver, Terrell Buckley, there defensively. Harrison wanted the flag. I like the call. You got Marvin Harrison one-on-one. -on -one. He can out-jump the defender. He's taller than Terrell Buckley. Look at right there, the hands. The ball's there, but Terrell Buckley comes underneath, underneath his arms. That ball's knocked out of there. Great defensive play. Outstanding coverage by the defensive cornerback Terrell Buckley. These fans wanted the Colts to go for it on fourth down earlier this game. They didn't. They elected to go for the field goal. This time, they'll go on a fourth and two at the three. Timeout. Indy. Peyton Manning will go to the sidelines, have a little chat with his coaching staff. With 3.56 to play in the fourth. Miami in front, try to hold on. They lead the Colts 17-6. We're back in a moment. Peyton Manning on the sidelines. So obviously, you know what the Colts have decided to do. They'll go for the field goal, and the fans here not happy with the decision. Chorus of boos following Jim Morris' call. Mike Vanderjack. 20-yard field goal. He's connected on two already. And he's three for three. The Colts inching closer. Still looking for that elusive first touchdown. Miami leading it 17-9. We're back. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Nike. United Artists Ronin. Starring Academy Award winner Robert De Niro at Theaters Everywhere September 25th. And by Claritin. Well, they made the trip from Tennessee here to Indianapolis to cheer on former volunteer Peyton Manning. 
His team, though, trailing 17-9 as Chris Gardaki kicks it off. John Avery picks it up off the ground. Avery. Caught from behind. Avery had some open space in front of him, but Rico Clark got him from the blind side. 3.42 left in the fourth quarter. Miami 17, Indianapolis 9. Dolphins football when we return to the RCA Dome after this. Peyton Manning hoping he will get another opportunity to take the field and lead the Colts to their first touchdown of the day. Dan Marino has got a different take on this. I'd love to just chew up the clock. Marino, 13 of 24, 135 yards, has the one touchdown to Gadsden. On the handoff. Miami keeping it on the ground. That was the scouting report heading into this game. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has been the workhorse. Al Fontado making the stop after the gain of three and time ticking away. 325 to play on the fourth. Now, we talked about this earlier. Offensive coordinator Kippy Brown said he's going to hang his hat when he has to have it on center Tim Ruddy, right guard Kevin Donnelly, and right tackle James Brown when they need the tough yards. And this is the time where they need him because they want to grind it out, move the chains, get those first downs. They're going to run a lot of right formation. We'll see if they keep going to that bread and butter on the right side. Jabbar, 83 yards on 19 carries. Jabbar, he's got an opening. Across the 30, and he's still on his feet. Accelerating across the 40-yard line. First down Miami, 16-yard gain, and Mark, they move the chains. That's the one thing about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You're not going to bring him down with an arm tackle. Watch the left side right here. Get their blocks. Richmond Webb, a combo block. The tight end needs to catch up. But look at the left guard, the rookie. Look at Dixon, Mark Dixon, first-year player, getting his man four yards downfield, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar just running through arm tackles. If you're going to tackle somebody, you tackle them at least in the shoulder pads or the chest area. If you're going to arm tackle them up high or down low, a strong back like that will always run through. Jeff Burris had a shot at him, but could not finish him off. It's Abdul-Jabbar being stripped up right around the line of scrimmage. Jason Belzer, the tackle. We've arrived at the two-minute warning in the fourth. The Miami Dolphins in front of the Indianapolis Colts, 17-9. We're coming back. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. You either have it in you or you don't. Life's a sport. Drink it up. And by Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service. Back at the RCA Dome, Peyton Manning, hoping his defense can rise to the occasion. Two minutes left to the fourth. 17 to 9 Dolphins. Second and nine for Miami. At their own 43. Abdul Jabbar. He took a lick at the 45 yard line from Al Fontano. Timeout called by Indy after the gain of two. Great defensive hit, great pursuit, but at the beginning of that play, you're going to see Tony McCoy gets the penetration. That's what makes Jabbar take the ball wide. We'll step aside. Minute 50 left in the fourth. Time running out on Indy. Indianapolis' defense trying to hold with a minute 50 to play in the fourth. One more first down for Miami, and this game is basically over. It's a third and six for the Dolphins. At their own 44. One timeout for Indianapolis to work with. Marino comes to the line of scrimmage. Abdul Jabbar, the lone setback. They have run exclusively on this drive. Stay on the ground. Abdul Jabbar, he's caught at midfield, shy of the first down. And it looks like the Colts are going to get the football back. Miami goes to the counter trade. Look at the left guard and left tackle pull and run. He gets a crease right there, but runs into his tackle, then gets drilled, and here come the rest of the defenders for the tackle. 
Colts have taken their final timeout with 143 showing on the clock. Abdul Jabbar going over 100 yards on 23 carries has the one touchdown, but Dolphins needed the first down on that play. Well, next weekend, starting at noon Eastern, the NFL on CBS showcases regional games. Many of you will see Elvis Gerbach and the Chiefs battle Mark Brunel and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Others will see Buffalo versus Miami, Cincinnati taking on Detroit or San Diego versus Tennessee. That's the NFL on CBS. It all gets underway at noon Eastern with the NFL Today. So the Dolphins could not run out the clock. Klaus Wilmsmeyer on the punt. Aaron Bailey is deep. Bailey will let it bounce inside the 10. Dolphins able to down it inside the 5. And the Colts will have a lot of real estate to make up if they have any chance of sending this game into overtime. 47-yard punt. Patrick Sertain involved. Able to bat it back. That's just great coaching. The special teams coach for the Dolphins, Mike Westoff. They had a close one like that in the first half, but that's what you want. You want that ball dropped inside the 10, taking a shot, not going over the goal line, and batting it back and putting them in bad field position. Great field position for your defense. Not ideal position, field position for the offense of the Indianapolis Colts. 60 minutes will be coming up next, except on the West Coast. Following the conclusion of this one, Peyton Manning from his own end to Throwing. Calvin Jackson knocking it away. And Torrance Small was the man that Manning was trying to key in on. He had a step on the defender right there, but good coverage back there. Leaping at the last minute, Calvin Jackson coming off his fingertips. If he floats that ball out there another foot, it's off to the races. A minute 27 left. The rookie facing a tough test in his first NFL game. Manning putting it in the air and it's tipped up. Intercepted by Buckley. He will take it the distance. Game over. Touchdown, Miami. And with that, that's the nail in the coffin for this game. One thing that's different that Peyton Manning told us yesterday when we talked with him, there are no slower weak corners in the NFL. Everyone's fast. You cannot underthrow the football. If you're going to go with that pattern down the sidelines, you've got to make sure it's in one place where the wide receiver can catch it or it's thrown over his head where no one can catch it. Gets good protection by the offensive line. Steps up. Fires the ball. It's a sideline pattern straight down the sidelines. It's just underthrown. And Terrell Buckley comes up with his second interception of the game. He's played well the entire game, one-on-one -on -one with Marvin Harrison, and he reads that one again. That's film study. We talked about it before. His second interception of the game, 21-yard return for the touchdown. Third career touchdown for Buckley. Third interception for Peyton Manning. And with a minute 19 left, this one is over. Miami with a 24-9 lead. Archie Manning, his father, watching on the play. Archie's had that look for a good portion of the afternoon. But there will be better days for Peyton Manning and Archie Manning. Well, coming up, 60 minutes after we wrap this one up from the RCA Dome. This is the NFL on CBS. The Dolphins leading the Colts 24-9. And this game sealed following a Peyton Manning interception. Terrell Buckley taking it back for the score. Well, there are going to be a lot of long afternoons for Peyton Manning this year. Not easy when you're a number one pick at any position because basically you've been trapped him but had a bad year. Well, Troy Aikman's been through it, a former number one pick. He had a tough rookie year. The key word is perseverance. I, I think that there's going to be bad things that happen. It's going to be frustrating times. There's going to be times when you think the whole world's coming down on top of you. Uh, and there's going to be times when you really lose concentration and lose, lose a little bit of confidence. And uh, the thing to remember is that we've all been through it. And uh, we've all struggled. Uh, we've all had tough times as rookies. And you just got to realize that things are going to get better down the road. 
Well said. And they certainly got better for Troy Aikman. <laughs> a couple of rings. Went 0-11 in his first year. Shovel pass to fall. And he's down shy of the 35-yard line. yard game. One minute left. Pass brought in by Small at midfield. Coming up next, we'll head back to New York, Jim Nance and company, and you'll see the conclusion of the Jets, San Francisco, out of the West Coast. 60 minutes to follow. Broken up the sideline route, Sean Wood stepping in front. Marvin Harrison, the intended receiver, with just 38 seconds to play in the fourth. Peyton Manning walks to the line of scrimmage, and he fakes like he's going to down the ball, but this is the NFL. A lot of times on this level, that will not work. It worked for Danny Marino a few years ago against the New York Jets, and they won the game, but the Jets have seen it before. They're prepared for everything. A second and ten. From the 50. Three receivers for the Colts. Manning back. Over the middle. Small still on his feet. And tackle down at the 34. Flag goes down. Clock will stop with the flag. 28 seconds to play. 16-yard pickup. Personal foul, 15-yard face mask against the defense. Number 20, number 29. 15 yards, first down. Well, it looks like Peyton Manning may have one more shot at throwing his first touchdown pass in his first game. Jim Moore would love to see Manning get one under his belt, so it's not an issue next week when the Colts visit New England a week from today. throws to nobody. He was under heavy pressure from behind. Jason Taylor, Zach Thomas. Clock stops with 23 seconds left. And Peyton Manning's not getting a fair opportunity in this situation. The defense knows it's going to be a pass. Here he can't even step up. Look at all the defenders around him. People on his feet, Zach Thomas on his legs, people on top of his shoulders. He's not getting a fair chance to execute. They have to do a better job up front of protecting Peyton Manning. You see the numbers, the three interceptions. Looking for his first NFL touchdown. 23 seconds to play. Second and 10. down at the nine. Sean Wood colliding with Dilger to make the tackle. Eight seconds. Seven. Maddox strikes it with five on the clock. Continues to move. They've got to tack on at least a second, maybe even two. I think this is a situation where you have to build on something. The game is out of reach. It's out of hand. Hey, these are the fundamentals. Let this team know that the game is over, but we're not giving up. Have that mentality. It's not over for us. We will continue to fight in each and every game that we play. Four seconds. Four to the call. Could be the final play of the game. Push here, push here. Manning. It comes a little bit late, but still important for Manning to get that first score, and it is not an issue next week. And it's great that it goes to Marvin Harrison. He's the guy that they've had a tremendous connection with the entire preseason. And this is what we talked about earlier. He needs to go with the pump fake. He goes to the pump fake here to get the touchdown. The other times he didn't go to pump fake on those short drops, they had interception. And now confetti. Two-point conversion try. He broke it up. And that's it. The Miami Dolphins spoil the NFL debut of Peyton Manning. Dolphins win their seventh consecutive season opener. 
24 to 15 the final. Peyton Manning getting some words from Dan Marino. Manning also getting his first NFL score. And here the pump fake throws it over the top. Right over the top. Marvin Harrison skies for the ball. Catches it in the end zone. Peyton Manning's first career touchdown. The first of many, many more. Here's another look at it. Marvin Harrison one-on-one. -on -one. Little stutter step inside, outside. Goes over the top of Terrell Buckley. Just leaps for the ball. Stretches out. Peyton Manning's first. Manning's reaction following his first NFL touchdown. How to see it from the ground. In the end, though, it's Miami with a good all-around effort. They win it 24 to 15, the final score at the RCA Dome. For Mark May, this is Ian Eagle. Right now, let's send it back to New York and Jim Nance. All right, thank you, Ian. So, Miami beats Mora and Manning in their debuts there at Indianapolis. But right now, we're going to send you to the finish of the Jets game.